I'm Allison DuPont, I'm an interventional cardiologist. I've been in practice now in North Georgia for about 10 years. A, a normal heart pumps blood flow to the rest of the body. So every time the ventricle of the heart squeezes, blood is being circulated to the rest of the body. And what happens in a cardiac arrest is that the electrical system of the heart is not functioning normally. And as a result, the heart does not squeeze as it should. So instead of pumping blood through the rest of the body, it is not supplying any blood throughout the body. A cardiac arrest does not mean that the patient's having a heart attack. So the difference is that uh, in a cardiac arrest, the heart is not beating. So there's no blood flow coming from the heart to the rest of the body. In a, in a heart attack, what happens is the plumbing of the heart gets um, messed up. So there may be a blockage in an artery that is causing some of the heart muscle not to get enough blood flow. And that causes damage to the heart muscle. The blockage in the heart artery can result in a cardiac arrest. However, cardiac arrest doesn't necessarily occur every time a heart attack occurs. There's a lot of symptoms that can occur with heart attack and it depends on the patient, but the, it's very different from a cardiac arrest. With a heart attack, we all think of chest pain, chest discomfort. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes a heart attack causes chest discomfort. Sometimes it's just shortness of breath. Sometimes it's feeling very fatigued, nauseated, pain in the jaw or arm pain in the back. For a sudden cardiac arrest, that, those patients generally will have a sudden loss of consciousness and oftentimes will have what we call agonal breathing, which is a very abnormal breathing pattern where they're taking very strange looking breaths that are very irregular, erratic, and oftentimes very much slower than you would expect a normal person to be breathing. It's very important that patients seek immediate medical attention to get that artery opened up and we try to get that artery opened up within a maximum of 90 minutes from symptom onset um, because we don't want something like a cardiac arrest to occur. In the setting of a cardiac arrest, you only have minutes to act on the patient because the brain and other organs require blood flow continuously and as soon as the heart stops beating, those organs start to die. This is usually an electrical problem and in certain cases it can actually be um, fixed by shocking the heart back into rhythm using an, a defibrillator, either, either an automated external defibrillator or even an internal defibrillator if the patient has it. And so immediately the patient requires CPR and getting the heart back to normal rhythm if possible. 